Welcome to Revive at Home. So good that you're here. There are about 30 groups doing Revive at Home now in different places around the country and the world with about 200 people all together in them. Why not for 2022 invite more of your church congregation to come and enjoy this weekly resource and discussion notes. We're going to keep going right through 2022. So come join us. Today, I want to do something a little bit different. We have a new online show being launched on the 12th of December, and I want to take a little snippet from it and use it as an illustration for today's talk. So I'm going to give you a few minutes of a program that comes out next Sunday. Come and join us on our YouTube channel if you want to come and see the whole thing. But here's a little bit of a story of something that happened when we were skiing in the French Alps, and God spoke to us through it and I want to use it to share some thoughts that we can discuss and then do together today. So here's the program. Uh, it's called Cooper Natural. I know corny but I like it. But uh, here's a little snippet from Cooper Natural which launches next Sunday. to be in the great outdoors forever free you and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever We've been skiing like champions. We've been hacking the blues easy. We've been up the top of the mountain, wind blowing all around us, hacking down the blue runs. Everybody's confidence is through the roof. And my legs are so tight because of all of that. Our thighs are burning, thighs like rocks. Yeah, our thighs are really like rocks. Now, and now we're off to do a red run. Yeah. Lord help me. <laughs> Little did Vicky know she was really going to need God's help. There was one particular red run or difficult run that Vicky had really struggled with. Um, we're all pretty much learners and bad amateurs at this, so we were doing some scary stuff. Um, and there was this one run that Vicky had struggled with day after day after day. And honestly, I think she thought, now nah, this is beyond my ski level, I just can't do it. She ended up sliding down on her bum most of the time. Then a remarkable little thing happened. We'd been skiing in the uh, low, easy runs on the last day of our trip. And then we tumbled off the top of a chairlift into a big heap. And Vicky injured herself quite badly. Well, she got so mad and irritable that she was now injured and hurting and sat sulking for a few moments. And then it's like something clicked in her head or her heart. She strapped her injury up, got onto the chairlift, and we headed off to this red run with a new level of irritated determination inside of her. This time, she pointed her skis down this particular red run and as fear began to rise, she said no. And she just started to head down and instead of fearing and worrying, she started to sing. 
and it was it was pretty near Christmas. She started to sing, "Oh come, let us adore Him," and, and she'd sing a line and then turn and then sing a line and turn and sing a line and turn, and the fear was disappearing. She'd stop thinking. She was so irritable and pigged off. We're not been able to get this thing done. And instead, she turned to determination and song and headed down this difficult run with a big smile on her face and conquered it. Come on, there's a life lesson in here somewhere. You know, are you tired of being pigged off, irritated and beaten by stuff around about you? Sometimes you need to not get less angry, but more angry and say, that's it. I'm going for it. A little bit more determination, a little bit more singing, and what might we accomplish in life? What are you struggling to defeat? Come on, get more angry. Say, I've had enough. Start to sing. Point your skis downhill and go for it. Shit, go to Bobby! Uh, what do you think to that? Enjoy that. Uh, whatever you're going through, point your skis downhill, get more determined and begin to sing. Uh, we're launching Cooper Natural Sunday, December the 12th, eight o'clock in the evening on my YouTube channel. Come and join us for that. But here's the point that I want to bring out from it. And it's the singing bit. And I know in this story, the concept of singing to break through was a very psychological one. It was to overcome fear. But I was struck this week by some scriptures that I just felt, ah, I want to open that up in Revive at Home to go deeper into this subject. And it was in our, our house of prayer this week. Um, Andrew Murray read Isaiah chapter 6. Let me read it to you and let's get something from it for today. Isaiah 6 says this, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So it was in a moment of trauma. He was high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. I, I love that classic piece of scripture that shows us the very throne room of God. But what struck me was that at the sound of their worship, at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook. Stuff begins to shake when we worship. But what struck me most was that it was doorposts and thresholds, uh, doorways, entrances, thresholds into new things shake at the sound of our worship. And, and during the prayer meeting, once I'd heard that scripture read, I just began to meditate on the sound of worship that should be heard at the gateways and the thresholds into new places in our lives. Uh, moments of threshold into new days, gateways into new things or to overcoming difficulties, they often get filled with grieving and silence and wandering and meandering. But actually, when I began to think through the biblical narrative that we find from Genesis to Revelation, you often find that gateways are full of noise full of the sound of worship and praise, right? Think of it, Psalm 100. Uh, we will enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. We enter God's gates with the noise 
of thanksgiving. And then as I began to chart through scripture, again and again, I just see it reoccurring. Think of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, and he's facing this enormous enemy army. And you know the story. He puts his choir out front. They begin to sing and shout out to God. He's good and his love endures forever. And their gateway to victory in overcoming the enemy was filled with the sound of praise praise and heaven responded to it. Think about Jericho, which was the gateway city to the promised land. You know it. That's the story where they they, they did walk around in silence for six days. But then on the seventh day, it was all trumpets and shouting and the walls came tumbling down. The gateway to a new era had the sounds and the shouts of the righteous involved in it. There's something about the sound at the gateways of our lives that we need to sometimes arise, wake up, shake off apathy and go for it with God. Think of Paul and Silas in the prison, Acts chapter 16, and there they are locked down in prison, stuck. But at the sound of their praise and worship, the prisons begin to shake, uh, the chains begin to fall off, doors begin to pop open. There they are at the gateway of breakout and it's filled with praise once again. Think of Jesus entering Jerusalem on that little colt, that little donkey. And as he's entering Jerusalem, he enters to the sound of Hosanna, which means save us. And people are laying down palm branches and laying down cloths and cloaks for the poor feet of the little colt. And in the sound of worship, we have the break in of heaven. So for Paul and Silas, it was a break out. Uh, for Jerusalem, it was a break in. But wherever there's gateways, you find the noise of the people of God expressing their trust in powerful praise and worship. Acts chapter 2, we find uh, the church um, locked down. Well, they were they quite even church yet? Let's say they were a bit of a remnant hiding and locked down in the upper room. Then the Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit fills them. And not only is there a sound from heaven, but there's a sound that erupts from the church, from the disciples, as a new era is birthed. They're at the gateway of a new day and the sound of praise and worship, uh, speaking and, and no doubt singing in tongues together. And we know that somehow they ended up in a place where a large crowd could gather. But here's the thing, the sound of the church was found at the gateway of a new era. And this is what's bubbling inside me. I sense, church, that we need to begin to, to stir the sounds of worship and praise and thanksgiving because I believe we are at the gateway of a new era. And while some are, are mourning personal tragedy quite appropriately, there's, there's lots of other ones of us that are simply have been mourning the change of a way of life. We've been grieving over... Uh, uh, changes in society and in the world in which we live. But I believe for, for that kind of grieving that it's time for us to rise up and grieve no more, as the Bible says, uh, uh, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Maybe it's time we started putting on a bit of joy and a little bit of hope uh, and a little bit of moving forward in the things of God. So you find it in scripture again and again, gateways to breakthrough, gateways to victory, gateways to, to break out or even heaven breaking in, gateways to new eras uh, are, are always filled with worship and praise. Blind Bartimaeus, years after the original Jericho shout, found himself on the street in Jericho blind and Jesus passes by him. What does he do? He begins to shout. I, he must have known the old story of what the shout did in Jericho a couple of thousand years before. And here he is shouting again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He was at the gateway of his healing. He was on the threshold of a new day for him and he would not be quiet, even though everyone around him tried to make him quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Think of this scripture, Psalm 47, verse 5. God 
has ascended amidst shouts of joy. Do you need God to rise into a new day for you right now? I think we need to begin to express some new shouts of joy as the church of the living God. Express our praise. Let the sound of worship worship shake the thresholds and the doorways of this new era. Come on, church, we're coming through with God. When I think back through my own history, it's not just a singing story, uh, a skiing story, sorry, where a little bit of singing helps psychologically, but I can think of times when uh, major things have changed at the sound of the church in the thresholds of a new day or of overcoming a difficulty. There was a time when uh, we had managed to shift a lot of medical equipment to South Africa and it was stuck at Durban docks and we didn't have the right import license and the whole thing was falling apart. Now I remember being in this little cottage and there's a group of half a dozen of us who were on this mission. Uh, we began to praise God that he would overcome and that he would break in and this medical equipment would break break out of the turban docks and we'd be able to get it to this new little clinic that uh, friends of ours had been setting up for a million people that had no medical care. Well, as we praise and worshipped God in this little cottage outside Durban, uh, something miraculous happened with the head of imports in South Africa and he released a import license to us at such amazing short notice and for zero money. It was a miracle as, as, as legalities were dropped and things changed and suddenly God moved in on the scene and everything got released. And this incredible little clinic was set up in the northern area of South Africa. I, I think back through, um, again, these same people that set up that medical center, uh, the lady was a prophetess and she'd been called in to try and help two villages that were warring and fighting. And she was known as a bit of a, a figure in the area. So the local government said, would you come in and just help us to sort out this problem? Would you speak to the villagers? Well, she decided to take her choir. And before she said a word, she decided to dance and sing around the gathered crowd who'd come to hear her speak. And on the seventh circumnavigation of the crowd, with her choir singing, the glory of God hit the villages and began to overwhelm them with God's power. And salvation came to these two villages and the fighting stopped. The sound of worship at the gateways of salvation for that village. The sound of worship at the gateway of breakthrough and breakout for the problems we had with medical equipment. And, and what about, I even think, of, of a young couple that was struggling to conceive. And I preached one Sunday on the scripture uh, from Isaiah, Sing, O barren woman. <laughs> when you are at the threshold of new fruitfulness, uh, but all you see still is barrenness, but you're trusting God, what should you do? Sing. Fill that threshold with praise and with worship. Well, this couple decided we're going to sing over our bodies every day. And within weeks, she fell pregnant and I had the joy of dedicating little Jared, oh yes, they named him well, to the Lord. Something happens when we fill our gateways, our thresholds into new eras with praise and worship and song and thanksgiving, the sounds of trust and faith. It's good for us psychologically. It washes our souls in the fresh air of trusting God once again. It washes away anxiety. It, it, it soothes our trauma if we've been through difficulty. But more than that, Something happens in heaven when we fill the doorways and the pivot points of our life with worship. God begins to move, just like he did for Jehoshaphat, just like he did at Jericho, just like he did for blind Bartimaeus, just like he did for Paul and Silas in the prison. Again and again, he says, come on, sing. God will ascend amidst your shouts of praise and victory. It's what he does. Well, I believe we are entering a new era together. 
And I believe as we stand on the threshold of 2022, as we stand on the threshold of a new era in God, I believe, church, it's time to start expressing our trust and our worship. There is no greater act of warfare against all the works of the enemy than to put the name of Jesus on your lips, to put thanksgiving in your soul, to fill our rooms, our churches and our homes with the sounds of praise and worship and turn the thresholds into runways for a new day in God. Well, the discussion question screen is about to come up. Pause it and have a great discussion about some of the things I've shared this morning. And then pray and praise together. And let's welcome this new era with the sounds of worship. God bless you.